I started writing when I was working in a factory in Flint, Michigan. And the reason I started was desperation. My life was kind of the typical Flint, Michigan life. Right out of high school, I went to the factory to start working. I was going to University of Michigan nights and working in the factory during the day. I hated my job and I would read to distract myself. After a while, that wasn't enough. I'd say, I can write something better than that. And I would try to write, mostly keeping track of how much I hated my job and how much I hated my foreman. But it was writing and it was practicing and I would do it daily. And I kind of developed the system of the way I write now. My first book, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, I'd taken a year off work and I went to the public library and I would sit down and I would start to write. I looked at it very much as a job. I wrote the story. Then the next step is to try to get it published. I'd read in Writer's Market about contests and I saw the Delacorte contest for first young adult contemporary fiction. I sent it in. I got a call back from Wendy Lamb saying that the story was not contemporary because 1963 is considered historical fiction and the character was really too young to be young adult. But she told me that they'd publish it anyway and I was very happy for that. The new book, The Mighty Miss Malone, takes place during the Depression when many, many people were out of work and extremely poor and homeless. But there are things like that going on now. Many, many children go to bed hungry in this country. It's a forgotten group, I think. And that's something that I wanted to do, was give a face to the statistics and the numbers of poverty. And one of the main reasons that I chose Desa Malone, she appeared earlier in Bud Not Buddy. She gave Bud a kiss in a Hooverville. And I hope that Desa really kind of serves as that face and a voice and helps people to realize that the person you're sitting next to in school or the person that you see walking somewhere could be uh, in a, a totally different world than what you're in. Deza, Deza's happy, she's got her mother and father there. She doesn't even know she's poor. I don't outline, I just start writing to get to know the characters. The first thing I wrote in The Mighty Miss Malone was the scene with Mrs. Needham, which is very early in the story. I know growing up that I had teachers who I felt like they were so skilled that they made me feel like I was their only student or that they cared so much about me they really were interested in what I did. What I wanted to do with Mrs. Needham was kind of give a shout out to the wonderful teachers that we've all had that somehow have inspired us uh, to do more than we ever imagined that we'd be able to. And I had Mr. Allums who from the third grade to the sixth grade, I feared he was the toughest teacher in the school. His big bugaboo was penmanship, and my penmanship was absolutely horrible. And when I got to Mr. Allums, he was a tough guy, but he worked with me, and we worked and worked, and my penmanship wasn't improving. And finally, Mr. Allums said to me, Mr. Curtis, some people cannot write cursive. You are one of them. You have my permission to print from now on. So this is a tribute really to Mr. Allums and all the other great teachers that I've had throughout the years. The thing that touches me the most is when all kinds of kids, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, come to me and say, it seemed to me like you were listening to my family. 